Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 12.2. We're going to do more fun stuff with acids and bases, talk about what neutralization reactions are, um, ex- explain the difference between strong and weak um, acids and bases, um, and then given the molarity of a stronger weak acid and base, determine the concentration of hydrogen ions, which we kind of already did, which makes me happy a little bit in class uh, Tuesday. Distinguish between acid and base strength and acid and base concentration, which is not the same. They are not equal. And then list the strong acids. Look, I've done that. And the strong bases. Look, I've done that. Um, and identify the ions present in pure water. Give their concentrations. And use these concentrations to explain why water is neutral. Wow, that's long and wordy. Know that H positive times OH negative equals 1 times 10 negative 14. And any blah, 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 blah. Let's just go ahead and do it. Neutralization. Neuter. To take away the identity Oh, how sad. If an acid is neutralized, it is no longer an acid. If a base is neutralized, it is no longer a base. So it no longer has those acidic properties we talked about last time. It's no longer sticky. It no longer turns litmus red. It uh, no longer reacts with carbonate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if a base is neutralized, it's no longer slippery. It no longer turns litmus blue, blah, blah, blah. So if I have HCl plus NaOH, what happens? Look, I'm an H giver. I'm an H taker. I get H2O plus NaCl. Is the product an acid or a base? Well, the first product is water. So is water an acid or a base? No. Um, water is neutral. Oh, ouch! <laughs> oh, that's sad. And then NaCl, it doesn't have an H to give or a place to take an H. So is that an acid or a base? Oh, ouch! It's neutral as well. Oh, ouch. So... Let's look at some examples of neutralization reactions. Remember, neutralization reactions are always going to be an acid plus a base. So here's my acid and H giver, right? So, and this is going to be my H taker part. So HNO3 is going to be, uh, is going to turn into HOH. I know it's water, but it makes me feel better doing that for now. Plus, now you may be tempted to want to write NO3. Okay, don't do it. The metal always goes first. Whatever comes first on the periodic table will do that. Now I'm going to have KNO3. Now I need to make sure that I have um, my elements properly crisscrossed, if you remember that. Um, potassium in the periodic table is in the first column. Remember the periodic table? Oh, yeah. Plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, blah, 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 minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0. Potassium is plus 1. Nitrate hopefully we remember, is negative 1. So these charges cancel, so I don't need to do anything with it. And I have just neutralized an acid and a base. Then I have HNO2 and FeOH taken twice. So here we go. We've got H giving, and then OH is going to take it. So H2O, or HOH, um, sorry. Um, and then I'm going to have Fe. NO2. Now, NO2 over here, since I have 1H, is negative 1. And iron here, since I have a 2 over here, is going to be plus 2. So that means when I rewrite this, I should crisscross this and get Fe NO2 taken twice. Now, we won't have a whole lot where we've got to crisscross these guys, but you should be able to look at that and go, oh, I remember that. That's fun. So what I end up with for each of these is, of course, water water, and a salt, and if you recall, a salt is something that starts with a metal and ends with a negative ion, and that makes us all happy. Strong acids, this word strong, means it specifically dissociates 100%, not a lot, not bunches, exactly 100%. So HCl splits apart. And there's no such thing as HCl when you mix it with water. You get H3O positive, or just plain old H positive, plus Cl negative. And that is it. 100% of them, none of them stick together. If these two start to go, oh, I kind of want to rejoin you. No, it does not happen ever, ever, ever. It splits up 100%. Okay? This is a strong acid. And we listed the strong ones before. Okay? HNO2 is a weak acid, and it's missing a plus sign. So HNO2 plus H2O gives you H3O plus NO2 a little bit. So what happens is mostly, mostly what happens is nothing. 
mostly what happens is nothing. This happens a little bit like 5% of the time. Okay? So like 5% of the time, it's not a lot. If it dissociates 100%, it's strong. If it's 99%, it's weak. If 5%, it's weak. So if I tell you that there, um, is, there are three strong chemistry students in my class, three strong chemistry students, that means three people have 100%. Okay. Everybody else is weak. Now, does that mean that everybody has less than 5%? No, I could have another 19 chemistry students that have 95%. But they're all considered weak. They are not strong because they're not 100%. So strong means 100%. Strong means 100%. So you're either strong, you're perfect, you're 100%, or you're not. So. Dissociation means something else. So just so you guys can see this, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Um, you tend to have an acid, which this showed as a red dot. And then you have a proton, which we will call um, is the H, which I'll make a blue dot just so I can see it a little bit better and make my red look not like it's got those white things on there. Okay. So if this is my acid, a red and a blue, if it is strong, every one of these guys must separate. So if you look at this picture, and I looked at, uh, I forget what I Google image this, but this is probably dissociation or 100% dissociation. If you look here, every one of these red guys, every one of them no longer has a white proton or an H. Remember, I shouldn't even call this a proton. It's an H positive. Okay. So every one of them has lost its proton. Every one of them? Every one of them. 100%? 100%. Now, if it's weak, notice how these two are together, and these two are together, <gasps> and these two are together. Now, I would point out this guy lost his, but if there's even one of them that they're still together, whoops, if there's even one of them still together, this is weak. And it's not weak because most of them are still together. It's weak because it's not 100%. So strong, again, is 100% dissociation, which means it breaks into pieces. Concentrated means something else. Concentrated means how many particles, right? Concentrated means how many, specifically, lots of particles. Strength is how much they separate. So in this case, this is dilute because there's not many. And this is concentrated because there are many. Notice how this does not care if it's split apart or not. It's just how many there are. All right. Strong acids have their concentration, so whatever the concentration of the acid is, that's going to equal H positive. You need to know your three strong acids. By the way, you should know them by name as well. Hydrochloric, nitric, and sulfuric. And those all should end in acid. So if those equal each other, what is the H positive concentration of 0.25 molar HCl? Well, if it's a strong acid, and it is, then 0.25 molar HCl equals 0.25 molar H positive. Why? Because it dissociates 100%. So H positive, if this is a strong acid, nitric, oh, look, it's on my strong list. That means H positive is 0.15 molar H positive. Isn't that nifty? I sure think so. Strong bases have their concentration equal their OH negative. Strong bases dissociate 100%. 100%. 100%. Strong means 100%. If I said, man, TG smells strong today, that means he stinks 100%. You need to know your strong bases, which are group 1 and group 2 hydroxides. If you have a periodic table handy, um, your group 1 and 2 hydroxides would start with lithium, sodium, potassium, and your group twos would be beryllium, magnesium, and the ones that go down through there. Um, don't even think HOH, which is water, is a strong base. Shame on you. Okay. What is the OH negative concentration of 0.2 molar NaOH? Well, that's strong, right? So OH is 0.2. So OH negative equals 0.2 molar. So what is the POH of that? Oh, POH equals negative log of OH. So the negative log of 0.2 is, my batteries are low, clear, negative log 0.2 is 0.699. And that's my POH. 
What is the OH negative of 1.25 E negative 6 KOH? Is that strong? Oh yeah, K is in that group 1, so it's strong. So that means the OH is 1.25 E negative 6 molar OH. So what is the POH? Oh, POH is negative log of OH. So I'm going to negative log 1.25 E negative 6. And that will give me my POH. Negative log 1.25 E negative 6. Enter is 5.90. And there you go. So what about water? Water is neutral, but I prefer to think of it as both acid and base. But their characteristics neutralize each other. Ouch! So to show you what that means, is HOH, remember, so if this is my H giver and this is my H taker, right? So I'm going to have this H is going to come over here and make H3O positive. And if you remember, H3O positive is exactly the same thing as H positive. Exactly the same thing. So I just made H3O positive here, and what I have left over is OH negative. <gasps> Look, that's the acid part. <gasps> Look, that's the base part. Is it an H giver? Yes. Which one? Number one is the H giver. H taker? Yes. Number two. I don't know why I put two on there. Yes. Are OHs made? Yes. That means it's a base. Are HS made? Yes. That means it's an acid. So wow, it is both. How interesting. Now, if I did that, if I had H2O, I'm going to make it a little bit simpler, 2H2O, or just H2O, makes H positive plus OH negative. Okay? And if that happened, wouldn't I make exactly one H positive and exactly one OH negative? Yeah. So H positive would equal OH negative. And if pH is 7, right, pH is 7, then POH is 7 because pH plus POH equals 14. If pH is 7, then H positive is, remember, H positive equals 10 to the negative pH. So H positive equals 10 to the negative 7, or I prefer 1 E negative 7. Right? So if that's 1 E negative 7, so H positive, which would be 1 E negative 7, times 1 E negative 7, right, because they're going to equal each other. It's going to eat 1 E negative 14. So since water is key to all acids and bases, then this is true for all acids and bases. So let me say this again. Here's a happy equation you should know. We've just kind of proved it. Hey, that's like geometry class. And eh, nobody likes that. Okay. Write this question right here. Do not write the table. Look at this table. What happens to OH negative? when H positive increases. So if H positive goes up, which by the way, this is where it's, it's going up. If I call this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going up. It's getting bigger, right? Because remember, this would be 0.001, 0.001, 0.001, etc. So as this got bigger, what happens here? It does the opposite. So if this is negative 10 and this is negative 4, if this got smaller, this one just got a little bigger. I'm sorry, if this got a little bigger, this got smaller. This got a little bigger, this got a little smaller. This got a little bigger, this got a little smaller. This got a lot, this got a little bigger, this got a little smaller. This got a lot smaller, this got a lot bigger, except for I put B. This got a lot smaller, this got a lot bigger. So what happens to OH when H positive increases? So what ha when H positive increases, OH gets smaller. Isn't that nice? What would happen if OH negative went up? Then H positive would go down. These are like enemies. And this is like if something is more acidic. If I said, wow, that's acidic, that means it's not very basic. Oh, so if something is very acidic, it's not very basic, and so on and so forth, and all those other things. Hey, review slide. I love that one. So acids and bases neutralize each other. Concentration is not equal strength. Strength, 100% or nothing. You are weak. Know what is strong. Those three acids and the group 1 and 2 hydroxides. Strong is 100%. As H positive goes up, OH negative goes down. As OH negative goes up, H positive goes down. And we are all done.